Hello everyone, and I thought I'd just wager in on this whole controversy about Mizu and the protests that were happening. Namely, uh, the uh, anti-free speech antics that these protesters had been up to, and I'll also discuss what the whole problem was about as well. Hello everyone, this is Charlie Man Ugh! Damn it, I can't see a thing in this! So, we need to discuss the first event that took place, and this is what caused the most vocal member, hell, he could even be described as the leader of the Concerned Ni Students 1950 group, Jonathan Butler, to start his journey of uh, becoming the social justice warrior god that he could well become in the future, by hunger strike, of course. And this is uh, an event that happened, we don't know if it happened, even though it was reported, that doesn't mean it necessarily happened because all of this is all, most of it is all alleged. So, a black student was walking down the street, and in what can be described as only a stereotypical incident, as a vernaculist described it as in his video, a pickup truck full of white men went down the road and they called him a nigger. This student, this wasn't Jonathan Butler. And this caused outrage, and so the Concerned Students 1950 staged a small protest at a parade, and they also wanted Tim Wolf to to talk to them and help explain this issue, try and solve the issue. Now, the several, Tim Wolf did try to talk to Jonathan Butler, he did try to talk to the Concerned students. In fact, he did talk to quite a few of them, in fact, outside the, the university, and had a little speech with them, and engaged with them. Of course, they weren't interested in what he had to say. He said that he would try and uh, to uh, solve these problems and issues that they may have. They can come to an agreement through talking and diplomacy. But of course, they weren't interested. They want him to recognise these systems of oppression and to recognise that there is indeed a horrible racism problem and that these are poor, repressed, rich black people need his support. They need his support so badly. They need him to solve these horrible problems that, you know, if he fails to do so, he will be removed. Now, for let's just say this right now. We do not know if these guys in this pickup truck were even students at that university. They may not have been. In which case, Wolf can do nothing about it other than file a police report or say that to them, sorry, there's not much I can do, it's beyond my power, beyond my control, I'm sorry, such is life, you cannot do anything about this, unless they were caught on camera, or the student can recognise these people in public and call the police, that's all they can do, call the police, file a report, and hope for the best, but no, not good enough, not good enough. Of course, the events don't end there, this is kind of a tidal wave. A slippery slope, you might say, of events that eventually culminated into these protests. And one of the chief events, the one immediately after the drunken student shouting obscenities at uh, the Legion of Black Collegians, was that somebody decided that they would have a shit and draw a swastika in the toilets. Now, the, the school decided that yes, they would file a vandalism report and try to find this person. They have not found this person, but of course, this made the, the, the Concerned Students 1950 incredibly angry. This is beyond acceptable. Of course, it is beyond acceptable, but it's clear now that the university has a huge racism problem. It's terrible. We have to act. There are systems of oppression being formed all over across these poor students, student lives, and oh my god, these privileged people who have probably never had to deal with much problems in their lives are suddenly faced with this horrible problems that the people from the 50s and the 60s had to face. Oh my. So, again, they complain that Tim Wolf has to act. Of course, he couldn't really act. What could he do? They couldn't find this person. And even if it was, apparently, a neo-Nazi, although it could well have been a troll, a 4chan type person who was doing this, that doesn't mean that the university itself has issues with racism. 
quite the opposite. It could just be that these events have happened and you're taking advantage of them to protest and get rid of someone that you don't agree with at this current time. Now this caused a whole lot of problems. The football team threatened to boycott the university and stop playing because of these persistent allegations of racism on campus, which of course is completely bogus. I mean, apart from one drunk student and one swastika, that could have been a joke. We do not know why the person did it. We don't know why he vandalised it. As I said before, this apparently constitutes a racism problem. Three separate incidents which these concerned students have decided to put together to form a narrative in order to basically attack Tim Wolf because they don't like him and they don't agree with his methods. Tim Wolf had to resign. He had, um, of course, there were other problems as well. If you read the New York Times piece, he had a lot of pressure, not just from these students, but from the Democrats and the Republicans over Planned Parenthood, because the university has a tie with medical institutions, Planned Parenthood, of course. So, due to pressure from the Republican Party, he was forced to give up these ties to end them and stop the Planned Parenthood research which of course angered the Democrats who argued that this was a of obviously him bowing to political pressure and of course on the same side he's bowing to more pressure from left-wing authoritarians as much as the right-wing authoritarians who weren't happy with the, the university researching all these things so Overall, he had to resign, and I don't agree with it. Of course, the, the pushing point was obviously the concerned student 1950. The others were simply elements of a story that could probably have been the main story almost 15 years ago. Well, even 20 years ago, it would have been the right-wing pressure to force him to resign, wouldn't it? But no. Anyway, where were we? Ah, yes. Whether or not you agree with him resigning or not, I personally think that he shouldn't have resigned. He had his hands tied. He had all these things from both sides. And he had a student, Jonathan Butler, who was basically threatening to kill himself if he did not resign and did not sort these problems out. Hell, they now they had decided that he could not solve these problems, so now he had to resign because apparently he's a racist and he's enabling systems of oppression. So really... I guess there's not much he could have done and he folded because the the price of a student dying on your watch specifically a, a minority student would look terrible it would be a horrible blemish on your career so sadly he had to re resign but as the vernacular said in his video again uh, some people probably would not fold I certainly wouldn't fold there were some people who would have let Jonathan Butler die and let's be honest he would not be missed by the world. So, who are concerned students 1950 anyway, and why were they doing this? What exactly made them want to make him resign, and what are they for? Why are they so popular in the news right now? And why did this lead to the other protests in which a Asian reporter, student reporter, was blocked from this safe space. So concerned students are basically a protest movement in a similar vein to Black Lives Matters. In fact, I would not be surprised if they were, if, were directly influenced by these people, these slacktivists online. If you look at them <laughs> in the photos of them, you see them doing black power salutes and wearing t-shirts that said 1839 which I assume was the foundation of their university, was founded on our blacks. The L in brackets, obviously. Now, there's a problem with that, of course. Uh, it was not founded on their backs or their blacks. It was founded well before they were even born and probably built by black people they probably weren't even related to. How many of these black students weren't born in misery? How do you know that? How do you know they were not born in Missouri and they were not oppressed? Those black people who built it, they were oppressed. Those slaves, they were oppressed. You, you rich college students with your privileged gender studies degrees and social justice degrees, you are not oppressed. You are in fact privileged, but of course, you've been brainwashed into thinking that you are oppressed because you just happen to be black. I mean, you know, this is the thing, isn't it? The, the men, 
specifically white men are the oppressors, while the women and other minorities are, uh, well, women aren't minorities, but you know what I mean, are apparently the victimised, even though history suggests otherwise. And this is the problem with them. They're ideologically dogmatic, and because of that, they refuse to remotely compromise on these beliefs. They, that, this is why they refuse to talk with Tim Wolf properly and actually deal with the problems, even though there wasn't really much of a problem. These were isolated incidents that resulted in months of, of protests, resulting in a resignation. Anyway, let's just get back on to these concerned students 1950 and see what they're all about. And this is the first page of what they are. This is a PDF which explains who they are and their demands. And I'll just read this extract here and it says, During the University of Missouri's 104th homecoming parade Saturday, October 10th, 2015, 11 black student leaders on campus interjected themselves into the parade, presenting UM System President Tim Wolfe and the Columbia community with a demonstration addressing Mizu's history of racial violence and exclusivity, which of course, as we've seen, is patently false. None of them have been excluded from anything, and there has been no violence reported at all. It's mostly been verbal uh, assault, if that if you can even consider words to be assaulting. The demonstration covered the raw, painful, and often silenced history of racism and discrimination on the University of Missouri's campus. In fact, it was so silenced that <laughs> that these guys were protesting and people were listening to them and they got into the news. So apparently it's a raw, painful and silenced history, even though everything has been recorded and everyone is talking about these things. The history of racism at Mizu dates back to 1935 when Lloyd Gaines petitioned the university to be its first black law student and was denied admission. The actual year that the first black student, Gus T. Ritchell, was accepted in the University of Missouri was until 1950, hence where the concept of Concerned Student 1950 comes from. Concerned Student 1950 thus represents every black student admitted to the University of Missouri since then and their sentiments regarding race-related affairs affecting their lives at a predominantly white institution. Not only do our white peers sit in silence in the face of our oppression, but also our administrators who perpetuate that oppression through their inaction. The black experience on Muse's campus is cornered in offices and rarely attended to until it reaches media. <clears throat> So these are people who claim to represent and speak for all black students, alive or dead, since 1950. This is the problem with social justice. They claim to be the voice of all the oppressed and all the minorities. To claim that they speak for all of us. Well, they don't. Because, let's be honest here, these students from 1950, 1960, 1970, 18, 90, 2000, hell, even 2010 probably do not agree with these people. They probably have different ideas and different perspectives of what life was like for them and their colleagues and and take your pick, whatever, when they were students. They do not know that. They cannot speak for these people. In fact, on YouTube, I saw someone who went there who is now a lawyer. He's black. And he said that these people don't speak for him and that if there were systems of oppression, then there would be a way to redress them through law. But these people are not interested in changing the law. These people are more interested in their politics and enforcing a totalitarian regime upon the university. They want the university to be moulded in a way that suits them. They want one big safe space under their control, and we'll get to that in just a minute. And apparently, their affairs are only only taken seriously when it reaches the media. Tim Wolf tried to talk to them. He tried to talk to them, he tried to fix their problems, he wanted to talk with them and discuss these issues, but they refused. And, when, and Jonathan Butler, that oh-so-oppressed rich person, was so oppressed that he decided that he would go on a hunger strike and <laughs> basically almost killing himself. And this was before it all reached the media. It's only been reaching the media now, in fact. But anyway, let's continue. Then and only then do campus administrators seek reactionary initiatives to attest to the realities of oppressed students, faculty and staff. These temporary adjustments to the university's behaviours are not enough to assure that future generations of marginalised students will have a safe and inclusive learning experience during their time at Mizu. Well, you're wrong there because they clearly tried to solve your problems but you didn't want them to. 
It is important to note, they continue, as students it is not our job to ensure that the policies and practices of the University of Missouri work to maintain a safe, secure and unbiased campus climate for all of its students. We do understand, however, that change does not happen without a catalyst. Concerned Student 1950 has invested time, money, intellectual capital and excessive energy to bring to the forefront these issues and to get administration on board so that we, as students, may turn our primary focus back to what we are on campus to do, obtain our degrees. Well, they tried, but you did not accept their help. But anyway, let's have a look at their list of demands. Demand 1. We demand that the University of Missouri Assistant President, Tim Wolfe, writes a handwritten apology to concerned students 1950, demonstrators, and holds a press conference in Mizu Student Centre regarding the letter, which, in the letter, and at the press conference, Tim Wolfe must acknowledge his white male privilege, recognise that systems of oppression exist, and provide a verbal commitment to fulfilling concerned student 1950 demands. We want Tim Wolfe to admit his gross negligence, allowing his driver to hit one of the demonstrators cons consenting to the physical violence of bystanders, and lastly, refusing to intervene when Columbia Police Department used excessive force with demonstrators. Now, this is a problem here, because most of these events have been lied about and grossly exaggerated. A, a car did hit a person, but it's a parade, and they were actively trying to stop them from driving. You can see the the, the uh, footage in the description down below, and it's clear that the car barely hit someone, and the police were there, but they only were basically doing basic crowd dispersal. Arms out wide, saying, okay, enough, enough, go on, leave. And let's not forget, these people interrupted the parade. They interrupted that parade to discuss their issues to protest i don't know whether or not they had the permission to do so but oh well who cares uh, but we'll get we'll return to this one at a later date two we demand the immediate removal of tim wolf as un president after his removal a new amendment to un system policies must be established to have all future un system president and chancellor positions be selected by collective student staff and faculty of diverse backgrounds which already happened, and that's wrong. Why should you have to remove him? What exactly has he done wrong? He hasn't actually done anything neglectful. But let's continue. Three, we demand that the University of Missouri meets the Legion of Black Collegians' demands that were presented in 1969 for the betterment of the black community. That was so long ago, you weren't even born. Most of you were not born. In fact, I'd wager none of you were born in 1969. Where are the older students born during 1969 or you know, born in 1969, and so waiting. Because as far as I know, the University of Missouri probably has accepted it and are trying to better the black community because it won't be your black community because you're not part of the people in the ghetto. You're the people living in mansions and nice suburban houses beyond the picket fences. You probably have never met a poor person in your life, at least properly. You probably walk past them and just got plebs. But anyway, let's continue. Four, we demand that the University of Missouri creates and enforces comprehensive racial awareness and inclusion curriculum throughout all campus departments and units, mandatory for all students, faculty, staff and administration. This curriculum must be vetted, maintained and overseen by a board comprised of students, staff and faculty of colour. Now this is a problem, this is, but this is totalitarianism, this is authoritarianism, these are, they are demanding that their version of the curriculum must be given throughout the entire school because only then can they be satisfied. They want everyone to think the same as them, to learn the same as them. And that apparently only people who aren't white can oversee this. Rather than people who are white who can offer another perspective and maybe stop it from getting a bit too biased and horrible for the students. But no, apparently because they happen to be black people and Asian people and white, uh, not white people, and take your pick, whatever. Only they can do it because only they are oppressed, apparently. Five, we demand that by the academic year 2017 to 2018, University of Missouri increases the percentage of black faculty and staff campus wide to 10%. This is racism. These two demands are pure racism. You can argue it's, it's a affirmative action, but it's not. This is racism. This is basically stopping other people who could be in those jobs because they're not black. I hope they don't implement this because it should be based on a meritocratic system. But, you know, 
social justice aren't interested in merit. 6. We demand that the University of Missouri composes a strategic 10-year plan by May the 1st. 2016 that will increase retention rates for marginalised students, sustain diversity curriculum and training, and promote a more safe and inclusive campus. That doesn't even make sense. And how do you know that these people are marginalised? What if they're just socially marginalised, not racially marginalised? How do you know this? You do not speak for these people. 7. We demand that the University of Missouri increases funding and resources for the University of Missouri Counseling Centre for the purpose of hiring additional mental health professionals, particularly those of colour. And blah, 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 blah. Basically asking for money to fund their social justice uh, campaign. And finally, eight. We demand that the University of Missouri increases funding, resources and personnel for social justice centres. Which is the same as number seven. They could have had seven demands. In fact, they could have had six. Because two of the, four of them are pretty much similar to each other. And you get what I'm trying to say here. So... <laughs> Despite the totalitarianism and the racism that these people have and are demanding, it's what they've done to Tim Wolf. Demanding his white male privilege and recognise that systems of, systems of oppression exist. And that is gross negligence. This is the problem. They're attacking him because of this. They've seen that he won't listen to what they have... Well, he's listened to what they have... To they've seen that he cannot act on what they want him to act on. And so, in order to shame him out of his job, they have to target his race. Because, as we know, to have white privilege is one of the worst things in the world right now. And don't forget, people will listen to them in the media because they control the narrative. And this is the problem. These people are so ideologically racist and social justice that this won't even be enough. They can implement all this. He's left. They will implement all this and it won't be enough. They just won't be there yet. It's pure and simple fascism at work here. And it's frightening. But I think it was all summed up when an Asian student journalist happened to accidentally provoke the ire of these students. So basically what happened was this uh, student, he was a reporter, he was going to the demonstrations that were going on at Mizu. There were quite a lot of them. A lot of them parked in uh, these silly tents and forming rings around them in an effort to create some kind of safe space. And he was just doing his job, just, you know, chronicling history as he put it. And you know what? Rather than let me explain it, why don't I just show you the footage? Couple more steps, don't worry about him. Couple more steps. Couple more steps. You guys got it. Let's go. Here. Oh, you don't have to push people. You don't have to push people. They're pushing people. Because you're moving closer to the table. Because I'm still there. Yes, but you cannot push them to move closer. They're still. I'm not going to push them. You need to back up. You're with the media. You're with the media. You got to back up behind those signs. That's what those signs say. You need to back up. We're back up. I am a student. I do my job. They have to respect their space. Move closer. These students are walking forward. This is the direction that we are walking. So you're pushing me, they're pushing me. They'll talk to you. Alright, don't, don't, right, don't push me. Yo. I'm not pushing you. Okay, well then we will just block you. <laughs> you need to step out of here now. You need to go. Yep. Students, can you tell him how you don't have a right to take our photos? No, I do. I do have the photo. I do have the right to take photos. First Amendment. I can't hear you. Excuse me. If you would like to take photos, you need to please give them space. Do not. You cannot be this close to them. Please. They're being close to me. What I'm saying is, you need to move back. Yes, you Job to do. I'm documenting this for national news. You can go. Hey, hey, 
like you can do that. Yes, I can. This is the First Amendment that protects your right to stand here. Protects mine. You're not going to yell at her. So just calm down. You're not going to. Okay, ma'am. She doesn't want you. First Amendment. Ma'am. Ma'am. Don't yell at me. Ma'am. The First Amendment protects your right to be here and mine. Okay, we protect you. Protect our space. Okay. There's not a law around that. Forget a law. How about humanity and respect? Well, how about documenting this for posterity? Please, sir. No. Sir, I am sorry. These are people too. You need to back off. No, there's no law. You know what? Let's back off about personal space. Back off. Leave these people alone. Respect the humans. Back off. You need to back off. Go. Don't push me. Oh, you know what? She gets to decide if she's going to talk to you or not. She doesn't need to talk to me. I don't need to talk to you. She doesn't want to see you. I don't want her to talk to you. I know that. I know that. I know that. I know you better back up. Why? I know that. Don't push me. Don't touch us. We have an unnecessary report of her Excuse me. I need to get through. No, I need to get through. Are you not going to let me through? She's in the way. I'm not in the way. But you, you have, you have Don't push me, ma'am. Don't push you, me, sir. 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 What's your name, sir? Can you please leave? You're with the Office of Greek Life? Name? My name is 1950. Ma'am, are you with the Office of Greek Life? No, my name is Concerned Student of 1950. Yes, sir. Hey, you gotta step back, bro. Check it out. Check it out. As the media, when somebody tell you to stop, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. You don't have to stop. You don't have to stop. You're right. You're all on public. I don't want to talk. I want to document it. You gotta go, bro. Just, just, what is it with the media doesn't support you? Just chill out, just a second. Bro. It ain't that serious, because they can call the police on you. No, they actually can't, because the law protects both of us being here. Hey, no, yes, we're not doing anything wrong. Protect the right to be on public spaces. I don't think we're harassing you. We say that you're harassing you. Excuse me, sir. Did you just touch her? Did you just touch her? No, she touched me. Tell us. You the one jumps. Respect for this community. What is so hard about respect for our Because I have a job to do. Yeah. We don't care about your job. They have a life to live. They have an education to get and a life to live. I'm a student too. But sir, these are more students who are asking you. Don't do that much. You need to calm down. Okay, but that's my job. And this is our friend. Our friend's life was on the line. We're asking you to respect that. And I'm trying to document that for history. You Everybody else has documented Everybody else says, sir, you got it. They're being respectful. You got it. Everybody else says, too, but they're being respectful. Please. They're being respectful be about it. Everybody else is too, but they're being respectful. You're not. They just want to be together. That's simple. Okay, they are together. No, I'm not going you are in there right now. No, you're not. No, you are be, you're infringing on what they need right now, which is to be alone. All right. Do you, ma'am? Do you see? You lost this one, bro. You lost this one, bro. Back up. You lost this one, bro. You just lost this one, bro. You lost this one, bro. Back up. Hey, where the signs at? Just put the sign in his face. Pass you lost this one, bro. Just back up. Just back up. You lost this fight. You lost this battle. Just back up. Hey. It's over. Look, we got a perimeter. Get to the middle. They got a terrible shot to shoot. Get away from them. You got the wall. Get away from them. Please get this man on Twitter and Facebook. You're an unethical reporter. You do not respect our space. Get away from them. You stay out. The wall stays out. Get them away. You, that's what we're here for. Now, inside, get away. They got nothing to do now. We got, we got, hey, we got to make this wall big. It's all good. I understand. Especially for disrespectful people like him. No, I didn't. He said San Diego. San Diego. Diego. Yeah. Okay, just push them all. What's your name? Okay. Let's well, go and push it. Oh. Yeah. 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 You're pushing me. You're not doing your job. Now you'd think that this guy being part of the media and this being their absolute moment where they could actually make a great case and see, show the world, oh, look how oppressed we are. We need your help. These are evil, horrible, 
university officials doing nothing to stop our racism problem. No, instead, they treat an actual minority, an Asian minority, with disrespect. They try to stop him from doing his job, just taking pictures and chronicling the whole situation because they don't like the media. They don't like him. He's infringing on their safe space because he is the media. And just look at the older woman there, just stopping him and pushing into him and then telling him to stop pushing her. This is the bullying tactics that I've so often talked about. Uh, you provoke them, they hit back, and then you claim that you are the one who was attacked first. And this is what they're doing. This is what they do. This is this is a group mentality, a group think. They're trying to censor him. They're trying to censor him and stop, to stop him doing his job. Why? I don't understand. This is the most opportune moment that you could possibly ask for. It's the media. He may be a student, but he's still part of the media. Incredible. This does not help your cause at all, people. This does not help at all. But you know what? It doesn't matter because they've got a safe space that they need to protect. But it gets worse. It gets absolutely worse. Hi, media. Can I talk to you? No, you need no. to get out. Well, you need to get out. No, I don't. You need to get out. I actually don't. All right. Hey, who wants to help me get this reporter out of here? I need some muscle over here. Now, in case you don't know who that woman is, that is a lecturer. That is a part of the university faculty staff called Melissa Click, a feminist, a media critic of sorts who teaches all that stuff that the Sarkeesian likes to peddle. This is a person who, who is a lecturer, a member of the university, censoring one of her own students just because he happens to be part of the media and he has encroached upon their safe space. You know, for some reason, they're happy to use their freedom of speech to basically force the university president to resign and to protest at that uh, little parade and then lie about what actually went down. Yet when people try to talk to them and report the news, oh, all of a sudden, we're not allowed to speak. What's the matter? Are they afraid of something? What is she so afraid of, this guy recording? The fact that they're looking like idiots, creating a literal physical safe space? Whatever it is that she's afraid of, we know is, we know what it is over here. It's the fact that they, she doesn't want people to see exactly what they are. Authoritarians issuing... De demands and wanting to change the university because they don't like how the university is run. That is it. That is pretty much it. It is an exercise of control and she doesn't want the media to report what it actually is. Now, later on in the video, which you'll probably see, she gets her muscle. Literally, she's going to force him to be removed from a place he has a right to be there. He has a right to record her. He has a right to speak to her. He has a right to disagree with her, which he did. But apparently, no, she doesn't because it's a safe space. Since when did that safe space become a legally defined place? No, it's a group of protesters stopping people from entering. And that is true censorship. Help me get him out! Who's going to help me? Are you documenting? What are you I'm doing? I'm documenting. Okay, well, you do you need to get out? Just you need to get out. This is public property. And yeah, I know that's university. a really good one. I'm a communication faculty and I really get that argument. But Certainly you need to go. You need to go. You need to go. So please respect these people's wishes. I think it's very simple. I, I, I didn't see you respecting that reporter. Well, they very politely asked you to leave, and I'm happy to walk out with you. I know. I mean, they very politely asked you to just go. You can go. You can go. Can you leave? Coffee! You can go. Coffee. You can go. You can go. You need to go now. You need to respect us, man. We're asking you need to go. We are asking you. We're here. We have to go. This dude right here trying to record. I know what to do that. Where's the police? The police get they they the uh, police cannot do anything about that. Well you have to get them. Oh my god. You're not getting anything you're not getting anything out of being here, bro. But you're really not getting anything out of being here. Come on now.
go out with everyone else. Everyone else is there with you. He wants to go out pretty bad. <laughs> and don't let him back in. Look at them. None of them know what they're even doing. It's actually denying his First Amendment. Isn't that technically illegal under the Constitution? But they, the Constitution doesn't matter to these ideologues. It doesn't matter if they're right wing or left wing. The First Amendment is nothing but a. inconvenience to what they truly want and it's a shame because they're winning they're, they're they seem to be winning at the moment with this act of censorship and bullshit so what can we take from this thing what can we gather what can we learn what we can learn that well these people are going to basically sully the name of all those people who did actually get oppressed did die for them and did try to change America and the world for the better. These people will use them to justify their totalitarian actions and then basically say that they're being oppressed. This is a perfect example of the brainwashing that social justice inflicts upon people, even up to faculty. It shows that the problem in American universities, hell, even the Western world, is at an all-time high. I mean, it's just, they're infested with it. It's, it's becoming far too far out of hand, resulting in people being forced to resign. And in another story that I might cover eventually, people being told that universities are no longer an intellectual space. So, I wish I could say more about this, but what has been told that hasn't already been said. So, anyway, this has been Charming Man 93. And I'll see you all later.